Um, Stuart Mackay here, just a, sh a short vid video to show you the uh, latest conversion or resto mod I've done of a, an old radio controlled uh, set from the 1960s. This one here is a RCS Digi 4. RCS stands for Radio Control Specialists. They were based in London and operated probably through to the late 80s, early 90s. Um, this one was bought by a gentleman who I bought it from. He bought it in 1968 from a shop in Western Supermare, from RCS's uh, outlet there. And uh, he kindly let let me have it uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I've spent the past couple of days con um, restoring it and uh, converting it to the latest uh, radio technology. This one is uh, now fitted... Uh, or we've now replaced the original 27 megahertz uh, uh, frequency um, or transmission frequency in, uh, with a 2.4 gigahertz uh, free sky uh, system an xht module which i'll show you in a minute uh, the receiver is also uh, a free sky 8 channel receiver which is uh, which nestles inside this lovely little uh, um, plastic and aluminium case um, so I'll show you how it uh, works. If I turn it on now, you'll see the, uh, you'll hear the that beeping noise shows that we've got a the throttle high. So if I move the throttle to the low position, that'll stop beeping. If I turn the transmitter on or receiving on, you'll see. Here we go. There's the aileron moving on this servo here. A bit cl closer, so you can see that now. There we go, that's got all that, and the elevator there, on the right hand stick here, and then the throttle open, closed, rudder left, coming up, there we go, and we've got that, and this, uh, this encoder which um, comes from a guy called Phil uh, Green, this is based on a DigiSpark uh, Arduino uh, setup which I've wired into all the pots and it also includes a feature of a single channel button so press once you'll see the what was the aileron control move to the right and press twice goes to the left and I might press it three times you should see the elevator move as well seeing that kicks up that's a kick up elevator control we've got on that as well so yeah that's uh, a quick run through on what the uh, system does and looks like now it's got full servo reversing in it and also has a, a fail safe system so if I turn the transmitter off you've seen the thr throttle has gone to full throttle here if I turn that off that should now go to low throttle which it does turn it on again you'll hear the beep warn me that the throttle's high move the throttle to low and then it's ready to go again that's a soft lock on the throttle there and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I've met. Here's a quick view on the other side of the uh, the back side of the uh, uh, transmitter. Not a lot to see in there at the moment. But what I will do is I will take the uh, printed circuit board out to show you the full installation. Um, this is the servo that would have that came with the uh, well, four of these servos, uh, which were part of the original set. This is. Uh, you can see they, these were made by a company in America called Orbit, and they had a rotary output, which this one's got fitted at the moment, as well as a linear push-pull setup on those. So there's four of those servos. Um, yeah, so that's the the uh, set set would, would have been powered by uh, DAC rechargeable batteries, of which this is one here. You can see that that's quite a meaty device and when I take the back off and uh, show you you'll see the size of the current battery that I've replaced it with so let me do that just now I'll just turn the uh, pause the video and then we'll have the back off and you can have a look inside so I've now removed the back uh, it's basically held on with four screws which are located here 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 and here that enables me to lift the printed circuit board out, and there it is. There, that's what the uh, heck, you know, what would have been the state of the art in 1968, um, and that's now replaced by this tiny little. 
what's it, three quarter of an inch, about 15 millimeter square Arduino. Uh, it's called a Digi Spark, and then it's all wired into the individual pots. Um, here's the bind board for the uh, 2.4 module, which is located down here. Uh, little uh, LEDs are on there. You'll see on here also there's a diode I fitted as well as a uh, variable resistance potentiometer there to give me a full scale expanded scale on the uh, on the meter. And here's the battery now. So if you compare the size of the batteries, there we go. And this is also 500 milliamp DAC as well. And if I look at the if you look at the the circuitry there, it's quite complex. Basically all that stuff here doing exactly the same as our little Arduino and the little XHT module. So uh, that's uh, pretty much it. I've uh, also stripped down the receiver. I'll let you see that as well. It's a double deck one. I'll move that out of the way. The original receiver is here, which hopefully you can see. I can move that to one side. And then you'll be able to... A bit of a tangle here. Don't do this all with one hand. Right. Um, there we go, you can see the that's basically the what was the aerial 30, well 27 megahertz aerial that would have been the crystal there on 27 megahertz uh, so that's the receiver and decoder um, of the um, the, trans, the 27 meg signal that's coming across and then this little board here would have been to um, power the servos which are four wire servos interestingly they're not current like the current three wire servos otherwise they might have used those in the uh, in the um, with the current free sky setup which as you can probably see on the transmit uh, on the receiver here I've managed to bury away a free sky v8 uh, receiver in this area within the old receiver case which makes it rather nice so it gives a period look to it so yeah there we go that's the RCS Digi 4. Um, back in the day, 1968, these would probably be about 160, 170 pounds, which is probably about the equivalent uh, with inflation of about two and a half thousand pounds for a, for a set. So as you can imagine, back then that was an expensive uh, piece of kit for the uh, Aero modeler. Um, they were used quite a, uh, extensively sort of in competitions. Um, Several nationals uh, winners would have flown with RCS equipment, um, whether in scale or in, in the aerobatics. And yeah, they were uh, quite a rare set. Uh, where, where I live in Norfolk, I don't, I can't remember seeing very many of these at all at the local club back in the 70s. So yeah, it's, this is the first one I've ever owned, and I'm quite pleased to uh, to have it. This is fitted with. Uh, with uh, bonus, well, the original ones were fitted with bonus sticks. These look like they're Remcon copies or clones of the Bonner, the original American bonus sticks. Um, yeah, they're not as anything like as precise as probably uh, as the modern radios. Got a bit of play in there, uh, just down to the tolerances and probably a bit of wear over the years. So yeah, generally it's uh, but it's a lovely little set really, and uh, look forward to using this in. Maybe a classic aerobatic model under a Phil Craft one or a Moon Glow or something of that ilk. Period aerobatic model um, with four channels and uh, having some fun with it. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a pleasure sort of showing this to you. It's uh, part of a collection of, uh, of or growing collection of old radios that I've got. And I'll just show you that. Give you a quick look at some of the ones on the shelf now, just to uh, so you can get an idea of what I get up to. Starting on the left-hand side here, we've got uh, quite an extensive, extensive range of craft radios from America, although one or two of them were made in Europe, in Belgium. Um, we're moving along a bit. Got some pro lines again from America. Uh, then we're looking at uh, the McGregor one, which I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of you guys will will remember from. Uh, the uh, 70s and 80s. Then going along the, the shelf a bit, we've got some of my favourite radios here, which are the Simprop ones, Simprop Digi 5, SSM Contest, the Hanno Pretna, uh, Acapulco, 
Sam FM, so Sam Gold lurking behind it there. So just looking at the Sky Leaders here, we've got uh, a TS and a uh, Sky Leader Clubman, which both are converted to 2.4 gigahertz. Oops, that's the alarm going on the transmitter. Let me just turn that off a second. Um, so we've got some Sky Leaders there. A little uh, McGregor single channel, which I love flying that. That's great fun flying that little rudder only models. Um, OS Cougar here, again 2.4. I fly a Gangster 63 on that. Um, moving along a bit, there's a Talisman uh, system here from World Engines in England. Uh, it's a seven channel one, single stick radio, twist for the rudder, elevator, aileron, and then oh, throttles on the left here. And uh, got another auxiliary control there. I'm oh, sorry, I'm on the top there. That's the yeah, that's an auxiliary there. Trims for elevator, aileron, rudder, switch channel there. This is a little Reedy six, 2.4 gig reed set. Turn that on. You can see that going. It's got a lovely little OLED display in there. And I was last flying a uh, what was that? Keelcraft Bandit with that little diesel powered one. Move that across a bit. You've got a couple of few, well, several few Tarbas here. Here's the one which a lot of people will remember from the early 70s, a few Tarba uh, Digimax imported by Ripmax. And here is the German version of that, the Robbie Digital Proportional, so exactly the same inside as the, uh, as the uh, Ripmax one, but sold in Germany. And then we've got another. A few Tarba M series here. This one came in from Holland. This one did that was a European style of badging they had, a little branding. Move them out of the way, and you'll see some more European ones behind them. There's a Rob Mars, it's a Grautner T14 there. Put him back. There's a little single channel Sky Leader one, which is a friend of mine built. Beautiful little thing. This I fly a little shark face on that. It's got a little OLED display on it. and Fantastic little radio, that. Uh, some more Sky Leaders here. Sky Leader Courier. We've got a batch of those, actually. There's a Courier, Courier Special Mark II. Uh, there's another Courier Special at the back there. Here's a recent addition here. It's the first of the 35 meg FM Sky Leaders, the TSX. Uh, and here's a fairly rarish radio here. It's a Swan Signet, or two channel. And then here's the Swan. Uh, four channel, sadly missing its uh, badging. But I hope that's uh, been of interest here. Just another quick scan along here. You can see I'm getting quite a few in here now. This is the, my uh, modelling workshop. I've got a whole bunch more of uh, slightly more rarer transmitters uh, inside. But yeah, great fun. Available at not silly money on eBay. Um, and Converting them and restoring them is a great uh, pastime. I've really enjoyed it doing during the lockdown period. And if you haven't started doing it, have a go at it yourself. It's very, very simple and very rewarding. Okay, thanks for watching. If you like the video, give us a like. If not, tell me to shut up. And uh, I'll get back and uh, do some more of the, the other sets at uh, sometime in the future. Bye for now.